What's up, YouTube? We're going to talk Essential Metal today. Annihilator's debut album, Alice in Hell. Yup, it's thrash metal from Canada. Like I said, this is the debut album from this Canadian band. It was released in the spring of 89, so still at the tail end there of the second wave of thrash metal. A good bit after seminal records like Testament's The New Order, but still before Overkill, for example, hit their peak with The Years of Decay later that year. Now, Annihilator has quite consistently put out music since then. Some of it I've kept up with, some of it I really haven't. But their first album, Alice in Hell, it is a metal clinic. It is simply head and shoulders above 95% of thrash metal that you're gonna hear. Simply because it has a lot more depth than your average thrash record, which I'll get into a little bit later. And honestly, when people talk about Annihilator, and especially Alice in Hell, they almost have a difficult time boxing it in that thrash category, which kind of says a lot about how much depth it has. First and foremost, there will be a lot of ranting about this topic later as we go through the tracks, but Jeff Waters, Annihilator's lead guitarist, the band leader, simply put, one of the most underrated guitarists in the history of metal. It makes my blood pressure just fucking build thinking about it. Thankfully, there's someone out there who gave him credit. I'm talking about the British journalist Joel McIver in this really great read, The 100 Greatest Metal Guitarists. The list is pretty iffy at times, but Jeff Waters comes in here at number three, which I'm sure bothered a lot of people. The, the block quote here, Waters' leads are among the very best on the planet. When he requires it, they can be incredibly fast, but they're always melodic and expressive, combining superb clarity with immense speed to make him one of the most freakishly talented soloists anywhere in metal. Now that sums it up really nicely. First off, the riffs on Alice in Hell are some of the finest examples of speed metal rhythm guitar that the late 80s had to offer. Plain and simple. But his guitar playing in the lead category offers something totally more. See, the problem I have with a lot of 80s thrash soloing, unless your name is Alex Skolnick, is it kind of is just there to enhance the fury of the riffage underneath it. You got like the Slayer squeals and all that. A lot of it, there's not really anything memorable. There's not a lot of melody. But when Jeff Waters starts to solo, regardless of what riff it is over, it diverts and commands your attention rather than just kind of building on what's there. And every time that guitar, that lead guitar tone comes through the speakers, it is a real treat. But of course, we're talking about a full musical album. I just wanted to get that out of the way. We're talking about a full musical album, so let's get into some of the tracks. So after some busy and intricate yet pretty beautiful neoclassical guitar playing in the opener, Crystal Ann, kind of just the short instrumental opener, we get into the album's essentially iconic track and pseudo title track, Alice in Hell. And when I say iconic song, or I use the term signature song, I mean signature song. This video literally could have been me pressing play on this song, this five minute song, and that's it. It sells the album that well. They pack more memorable riffs into this one song than most bands did in their entire albums. For me, the pivotal moment in this track is a minute in when the blistering opening pace is kind of brought down to this little pretty clean guitar interlude that has a thick bass melody underneath it because it says from the get-go that yes this is a thrash record but it's a dynamic one and it's not just this random clean part that's kind of thrown in there out of nowhere although it is it does a nice job of bringing the song from here all the way down to here so it can escalate to the mid-tempo verse groove it's a really interesting way like interesting kind of roundabout way of bringing a song to mid-tempo bringing it all the way down, and then kind of thrusting it back up after a little breather. And let me just mention here that thank God the bass lines aren't buried in the mix on this album because a lot of the bass lines, which are actually also played by Jeff Waters, are incredibly tasteful. They're really the vital bridge between some flashy guitar playing and some Mach 10 drums. Like the bass licks that happen underneath those creepy demonic chords that happen just before the vocals come in for the verse. They really become the glue that holds everything together. So credit's got to be given where credit's due, because remember, this is just a year after the infamously baseless 
and Justice for All by Metallica was released. Now the vocals won't exactly be a focus here because they're not the defining aspect of Alice in Hell that throws it on my essential list. But what I will say is vocalist Randy Rampage's delivery is perfectly suited for this record. I went on the site Metal Archives before doing this video, which you should never do, and I saw people bashing the vocals, and I'm like, this fits perfectly. He's like Zetro meets Bobby Bliss Ellsworth from Overkill. It fits the themes. Is he the greatest vocalist? No. But there's some really cool moments, especially on this title track. His odd, like, voice crack delivery in this song's chorus is one of my favorite vocal moments from an 80s thrash metal album, not to mention those over-the-top falsettos in the middle of the track. So I think the vocals fit this album perfectly, but obviously that's not the focus here. But anyway, I don't necessarily want to spend a disproportionate amount of time on this one track, A, because there's a whole rest of the album to get to, and B, because it kind of sells itself. I've been listening to this one song long before I even heard the rest of this album. So let's get into some of the other tracks, like the second one on here, the second full song, WTYD, or Welcome to Your Death, which is kind of the other iconic track here. And honestly, hearing these two back-to-back -back is about as good of a start as an album can get off to. This one isn't quite as all over the place as Alice in Hell, but there is this brief, quiet bridge section before Jeff Waters' wild, layered guitar solo. And it's a, another instance where Annihilator goes the extra mile, in that Welcome to Your Death probably would have already been a classic thrash tune if it was just lethal all the way through. But adding these little twists and turns give it freshness. And freshness is something in the late 80s that very few thrash bands could say they had. My favorite moment on this one might be that scream from Randy Rampage at the end of the first chorus, which is so fucking brutal. It's almost like a dialed back version of this band's first singer, Chris Barnes, when he would do those gurgly high screams. And as for the riffs, they keep coming and coming. In this song, the gold medal definitely goes to that winding, frantic verse riff, which is so fast, yet it's almost catchy. Track four, Wicked Mystic, is probably the first tune to settle for one mood all the way through. It's fast, it's urgent, it's got some riffs that fit appropriately but are pretty standard, but it contains quite possibly the best guitar solo on the whole album. Jeff Waters introduces it with this catchy lead riff, which ironically, since this song is so aggressive, is probably the most memorable hook on here. And after that quick little pause, when we do get into the main solo, what makes it so great is its uniqueness. I mentioned before kind of the formulaic nature of thrash guitar solos, going for these squeals and these screaming bends and these kind of mindless shred licks. Whereas the first half of the Wicked Mystic solo kind of goes for this more mid-tempo scale run approach. Funnily enough, even though it is like a, a shredding lead, it's almost hummable. And then when the first half ends and the second half does come in and it's full on shred fest, it makes sense in context because now it's been built up. you got this first half that's almost got this bouncy rhythmic quality to it. It's pretty quick and pretty flashy but hummable. And then it just goes balls out. And it, it escalates. It has a little bit of, I guess, character. It has a little bit of a peak and a valley in that sense. And before we move on, special shout out to that weird, random, sudden bass guitar fill that occurs right before the final verse. It always makes me chuckle. Bass fills like that actually kind of pop up all over this album, just like on the next track, Burns Like a Buzzsaw Blade, which, along with the closer, Human Insecticide, it's probably one of the two songs that does conform to that standard thrash mold of Annihilator's American Contemporaries, which doesn't really detract from the album, but it leaves a little less to be discussed in terms of it being distinct. It's just a standard ripping thrash tune. Next up is Word Salad. Now again, Annihilator does not earn the essential tag for Alice in Hell based on the album's lyrics. But I do want to quickly point out a pretty cool mental illness theme that runs through a couple of these tracks. So Word Salad in psychology is actually a term for one of the many symptoms of certain forms of schizophrenia. In Word Salad, what happens is a patient just says rambling, incoherent, combinations of words, particularly in catatonic schizophrenia, that make literally no sense. So what's cool here, there's a cool tie-in in that the next song on here, which is basically an instrumental, is called Schizos Are Never Alone. So I just wanted to point that out, which is pretty cool. I gotta say, a lot of these lyrics fit the deranged vibe of the album 
very well. Musically, this song starts out with this creepy, ominous, arpeggiated, clean guitar before launching into one of the album's best grooves. Now again, dynamics of the key here. A groove is a nice change of pace from three really fast-paced songs. So dynamics come into play on this song. Soon enough, we're back to lightning speed, of course. The money riff here is definitely the chorus riff, which has a Megadeth level of complexity to it. That clean bridge, even as dark as it is, is also a quick little breath of fresh air before probably the album's most impressive guitar solo, if we're speaking technically, although this song has like three guitar solos that are all way over the top, one even kind of conforming to the mold of the Slayer type solo with the squeals and all the crazy harmonics. But once that opening groove goes away, and other than that little clean bridge, Word Sound is fucking relentless in the best possible way. So now we're at the final trio of songs. This first one being Schizos Are Never Alone Parts 1 and 2. I include it as just one song. It's really an instrumental besides like four words that are uttered like four times each. My personal favorite riff occurs a little bit past the three minute mark right before some exceptional soloing kicks in. But this track, or really these two tracks, kind of function as an instrumental interlude of sorts. It doesn't slow the album down, but it takes away a little bit from a song and just focuses on collections of riffs. Some of them great, some of them passable. And But then these two last tracks are really the two that close the album out really strongly. Legea, I think that's how you pronounce it, is one of my favorites on the whole album, from the riffs, the soloing, the crazy bass playing. It's a little bit on the longer side, it's almost five minutes, but it doesn't feel like there's a wasted second on it. As for the closer, Human Insecticide, it might be the most vicious cut on here, because it's got these incredibly fast rhythms that don't let up throughout the whole track. The dramatic dissonant chords that are speed picked at the beginning of this song are also one of my favorite musical moments on all of Alice in Hell. The bridge is kind of a funny fake out because you expect the band to slow things down like they've done on a lot of the songs here, but instead the pace just continues to pummel you. It actually almost picks up speed a little bit. It brings the LP to a close in truly uncompromising fashion. That like short gasp for breath at the very end of the track is pretty fitting way to end the album. So, Thrash fan or not, I really hope you guys enjoy this record if you're checking it out for the first time. And if you're already familiar, I really hope you enjoy rediscovering it. I gotta especially recommend Alice in Hell for the guitar playing crowd. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.